Hey guys, Teladox here, and welcome back to another episode of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. So in the last episode, we got the three first levels done, we got some cutscenes and all that fun stuff. Now, it's go time, we're gonna go fast. So I got a story to tell you guys. So, I shut down all my stuff thinking, hey, I need to edit this video so I can upload it tomorrow morning. So I finished the video and then I edited it all, got it all rendered and stuff so it'd be crystal clear and smooth for YouTube tomorrow. And... I'm recording this on the same day I recorded the first episode. Um, oh yeah, I forgot that doesn't work. This, um... I realized I shut down my game without saving. Well, that means it's an old school game. This doesn't have auto-save, because I got spoiled by the remaster. So I had to completely redo all my progress back to exactly how it was. And it bothered me, because I had so many mistakes in that, that, that uh, third level. It bothered me, I, you know, I beat the time and all that stuff. But I had to just go right around the freaking gym. Just in case you guys do want me 100%, I want to do everything on camera. So, I had to completely restart and speed run through the first three levels. I dedicated all that speed, so I probably have less lives than the first episode. I have 13 lives. I didn't die, I just skipped a lot of stuff. Anything to do with, uh... Collecting stuff besides hitting boxes, I ignored. Oops. So we're about to go into a fun level here. Well, we we're already in that fun level, but we're about to go into the fun part of this level. Uh, we get to go backwards. And going backwards in a crash game, no matter what, how used you are to it, it's awkward feeling. Because you get no reaction time. You gotta take it slowly. It's one of the very few times I usually try to go on- oh, crap. I would say this is using the time I go on an analog stick, which I did in, uh, on the remaster. But, it's actually not- the analog isn't working for me, so... I just gotta lightly tap the D-pad every time. Cause you never know when that happens, right there. The danger of nature. Yeah, okay, we got a checkpoint, we're halfway through. So we just kill these guys real quick. So I don't have to deal with them when we get come through again. So we go slow because I feel like, yeah, I hear a monster thing right there. There we go. All right. So more saws. I think from there we're good, but I don't remember. I s I swear I saw the butterfly, and I instantly hit R1, but I didn't slide because I knew it wasn't a threat. This is my reaction was just uh oh. But yeah, this one of the very, you gotta do this a couple more times, I believe, in some other levels. And it is the worst part about a crash game, in my personal opinion. The backtracking in Crash is not good. Now, you know, if you're backtracking in, you know, in this view, it's, oh, it's perfect. But, backtracking backwards? No. I'm good. Let's just kill these things. I missed the skip. Boing. So my question to you guys, what what else would you guys like me to play? Because I have about one, two, about five games I know I'm gonna play at the start, and then I don't know what I'm truly gonna play afterwards. I'll, I'll think of something, obviously. That's like a month down the line. What the heck? I didn't break. Break. I have like five, you know, five games down the line, it's like a month, but I wanna, I wanna know what you guys would like me to upload so I can just, you know, upload it fast, finish it fast. I try to play these games in bulk and try to do them all in one night. Now some games obviously I cannot do that. Like this game, I'm not gonna do it, I wanna sleep after this episode actually. So, so I hit both of these, so these are gonna break immediately. But most games I like to complete in one night. Like when I did record Crash Team Racing, I finished it all one night. Started at like midnight, end at like three. I ended at like twelve, uh, at like one thirty. Now obviously it wasn't edited or anything yet because it's just it was just the file before I fixed the audio. But this game, this game was easily a good three-hour game for me at least. Now certain people can go it faster, you know. I need the world record. I, I can be like, yeah, I played through Crash and just did that glitch at, in, one of, in the warp room. And completely get every single crystal and gym that way. I can do that, yeah. That's that, that's not fun, though. 
I don't know why I was stuck in place there. But, uh, <clears throat> I was just wondering what else you guys would like me to play. So I have a pretty good, uh, library of games because my buddy and me share, not share accounts, but we have that shared account thing on Steam. That, so I could play his games when he's offline, he could play mine. And I was just wondering, because he's got a good collection on there, what would you guys like me to play? Because it would take me a while to download them, and, you know, whatever you guys would like to watch, I'm willing to put out, you know. As long as it's, like, not, like, a like adult-only game. That's the only type of game I'm not really down to actually put. I am down to put some FPSs on there, um, but... I'm debating on what FPS, because a lot of FPSs that I play don't have a story mode. Lately, my biggest FPS game I've been playing is Overwatch, and technically I've been playing World War II, but I've been playing it on my console, because like, my PC can't run World War II, so I've just been playing it on my console, and I've been enjoying it so far in the multiplayer, eh, multiplayer is eh, the zombies I really enjoy, because one thing I didn't say in the intro video, I am a big fan of zombies, I have so many hours in zombies it's not even right, I have probably... I know on Black Ops 3 alone, I have 14 days almost. And then on Black Ops 1, th uh, when I was really young, going to school, all I did on summer vacation was play zombies from like midnight to 4 a.m. every night until like, well, I said midnight to 4 a.m. Just every day, except for like a Sunday or a Wednesday. Uh, well, except yeah, no, I didn't. No, just on a Sunday. I did, I didn't play on super late on a Saturday night. But uh, I played a crap ton of zom. Ooh, I almost just died. I would have been very angry. I played a crap ton of zombies. I can't record Black Ops Three zombie. Oh gosh, dang it! I can do that. I know I can. I can't record Black Ops Three zombies because my computer's not good enough. But if you guys do want to see zombies, I can probably get World at War installed. And I can just record World of War zombies. It won't look as pretty as Black Ops 3's modded zombies, but the mods I feel are a lot smoother in World of War. Even though I have to install them manually, it just feels smoother. The mods actually work better, in my opinion. But I, you know, that's just my opinion. I only have like 70 hours in Black Ops 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I, you guys will notice that when I get to these parts. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I get to those parts, I'm gonna start uh, counting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because if I don't, well, then I'll probably die. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because I do not have the uh, brain to do it all in my head. I. I I could do it if I was trying. I can't talk and count at the same time for that. That would be very difficult, and I do not have that multitasking skill right now at 3 a.m. in the morning. Well, actually, it's 4 a.m. It just hit 4 a.m. But just tell me what you guys like. I do play Overwatch. I'm not, you know, I'm okay at the game. I'm not, you know, diamond. I'm, I'm around flat level. But if you guys want to see some arcade, I'm down to put some arcade. I, I play basically any of the really popular games. I play League of Legends, not as much as I used to. I accidentally killed myself. But I, I play League of Legends nowhere nearly as much as I used to back in my younger days. But if you guys would like to see that, I can record some of that with my buddies. I can maybe make a series off of that. It destroys that, don't you? Yeah, you do. Uh, we can try to make a series off of it so uh, you don't have to hear me just rambling on and on again. And mostly when I'm talking with friends, uh, I... Uh, I get more vocal, so I won't take as many breaks in talking. I don't know why he died. He was nowhere close to that coming through yet. But another gym, another day. So now we get to fight our first boss. This boss is named Ripperoo. He's a pretty interesting boss, but we're going to have a cutscene, so I'm going to mute. Enjoy yourselves. Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognize. Although they cannot harm you inside this warp room, they can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next warp room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. 
But I played basically any of the big multiplayer games. So let's talk about the story in this game real quick, since we just had a cutscene. The whole story in this game is that after the events of the first game, which I will not be covering because I'm not a big fan of the first game on PS1. On the at the end of the first game, you know, you defeat the main villain, which is Cortex, and now he's basically he's got no, he doesn't have any power or anything, you know. And so now in this new game, uh, at the end of one, he falls down a, a cliff, and in that cliff he finds that there is a master crystal that has basically, I would say basically very close to unlimited power. But it can't really be activated without the 25 slave crystals, as they name it. So, he has Crash because he has no more ground-based operatives on the Earth. He, tries, he uh, tricks Crash into thinking that he's on the side of good. And he goes to find all the crystals from Cortex, which eventually Cortex double-crosses him, like you would expect a supervillain would do. And that's basically the gist of Crash 2. Now let's talk about this boss fight. This boss fight, as you can kind of tell, for a first boss fight, is very easy. The boss technically does no damage to you. You can walk into him, nothing. No problem. Kind of weird in my, uh, in my eyes, but... The tough part is when he starts putting out the nitros. I think right here is a safe spot. Now remember, I have played this game for an ungodly amount of hours, so I I know this game quite well. I mean, I played the remaster when it came out. I technically just played through the game, literally, I played through the rest of the game today, before I realized all my audio was corrupted. So at this point, I'm no longer rusty at Crash Bandicoot. So I'm going to be doing a lot better than when I first started playing. Hopefully that won't... Uh, that won't help me in the third game, because the third game is even easier. Time for a cutscene. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Crash, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise. Crash, I can't keep the data pack open for Crash, you need to find... A good old story. So, we're going to do a little bit of a break from the levels, per, per se. I'm going to show you a little bit of an Easter egg. I hear... We have our good friend, the Polar Bear. So, there's an Easter egg that Naughty Dog put in to where if you jump on him ten times, I believe. I don't remember the exact amount. I just kind of jump until he uh, gives me lives. He will give you a, ran um, a certain amount of life. See? And there they go. I was at 24. We'll find out how many he actually gives you and we'll play his level. I believe he gives you ten, though. Yep, it gave me 34 lives. So now we'll go into his level, which are probably some of my favorite in the games. He is... Not the only vehicle level, because there's, there's technically three sets of vehicles in this game. But this is a platforming vehicle. Well, vehicle. You're, you're riding a polar bear. But the music is where it's at. This is what I care about. I love the music. When they released uh, this as a theme for the PS4 when you pre-ordered the game. For the, with the remastered theme, I was... Oh, I gotta kill myself. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, at least we get an extra. We get two extra lives, right? That 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 was the plan. Ugh. I just hear this beat and it's like, you know, jumpy. I love this beat. It is some of my favorite crash music. So as I said, when they remastered it and gave us uh, the theme. Uh, that had this music in it but remastered, I instantly put it on before a crash came out. Well, time to kill myself again. I'm really missing that one right there, which is really bad. I usually hit that, like, first try. And I said I wasn't rusty. <laughs> Please. But th these levels are so much fun. They eventually become very hard, per se. Like, th there's one boss, not boss, I'm sorry. Uh, one of these levels that is really hard, 
that requires you to do memorization over reaction time. Mostly for these... Oh my god. I'm the best! I'm so good! Um, but I'm sorry. Most of these I can react through reaction speed, so I don't memorize them. I just kind of, you know, they come in my head when I know where they're at. But I don't memorize these because you have plenty of reaction time. But there is a level on here that is a polar bear level that goes really fast that is basically the entire screen is blackened. Okay, we got it. Okay, cool. And we're gonna kill ourselves right away. But hey, it's right in front of us. You gotta look at the benefits. But that level is really hard, but like all levels that have the polar bear, I love the level. The polar bear just flows fluently. It's just so good. I could sit down and listen to this music for like an hour straight, how much I love the polar bear music. When the theme came out, I actually did do that. I sat there for a good 30 minutes just listening to the theme. It's that good in my opinion. So, good old nitros, they're always there for me. Jumpy jump. Oop. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this through because at this point we are past the. Oh. Hey, that's the hardest one right there. We did it. <laughs> Sadly, we just I kind of just shoved the polar bear into the water by doing that, which is a shame, but, you know, it's a polar bear. It's meant for the water, right? Yeah, when you're on ice, those, those spin speeds, so whatever you want to call them, I don't know what they're called, they just make you book it. But thankfully, we got all the gems and all the crystals in that level, so sadly, we don't have to play it ever again. But there's more, don't you worry. There's more of these levels. We'll let Crash dance it out, and as he does that, I'll do the outro. So, my name is, my, my name is, I almost said my name has been, this has been Crash Bandicoot 2, episode 2, I guess. I, I am not prepared for outros yet. That's, that's a learning experience. Uh, if, uh, if you would be so kind, if you could like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, Show me you're here, and comment if you want me to actually 100% this game, because I do not mind doing it. I enjoy this game very much. But it's just all up to you, because personally, I'd rather just play a different game and go on, try to put more videos out, instead of trying to grind out for Crash. Which, which again, I don't mind it. I just think it'd be, I guess, technically more fun. But, it's all up to you. But thanks for watching. My name has been Teladoc, and I still am Teladoc, and I'll see you later. Peace.